Hello and welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. Now there's been a lot of talk in our industry about using foam pans for tile and more specifically using foam pans with small tiles like penny rounds, one by one mosaics or pebbles, anything small. Because when foam pans first came out, it was discouraged by manufacturers to use anything smaller than a two inch by two inch tile. And the reason for this is a term called point load distribution. And the concerns are that if you have a heavy point load on a small tile, it cannot effectively distribute the weight across a larger area and the compressive strengths of the foam pans do not hold up. So one of the things that should be noted is that when you use a small tile on a foam shower pan, there is a big difference between the point load distribution of when a tile is grouted and when it is ungrouted. And as you can see, when I take the sample of the ungrouted tile, the penny tiles, and I push down on them with my thumb, it moves. I can move them. Now, movement like this would not be good in a foam shower pan because the membranes are very thin that we use for waterproofing, and they could be punctured with movement like this. When I try to do that same push method with my thumbs on a grouted tile, there is no way that I can move them. That is because the tiles are interlocked now with grout and the point load distribution is spread out more over the tiles and the grout. So there is a difference. I remember when this topic first came up on the John Bridge forums in like 2007, 2008, when these foam pans first started coming out. There was a lot of skepticism behind it from the tile installers because this was just unheard of. We've always used mortar for shower pans and the idea of using foam under tile on a floor just seemed absurd to a lot of us. So I remember this thread on the John Bridge forums from a gentleman named Dave Gobis. And Dave Gobis is a really well-respected man in our industry. He helps with the TCNA guidelines, just kind of high up in our industry and has a lot of knowledge. Uh, so to quell some of these fears that people had about the foam pans, he decided to do a test in his warehouse. And I remember seeing this picture of him driving over a foam tile pan with a forklift. And so that's always kind of stuck in my head. So when I first got this, what do you think I wanted to do with it? <laughs> I wanted to drive my forklift over it. So let's see what happens when I drive my forklift over this foam shower pan. the forklift just crushed the foam shower pan. The tiles compressed, the grout cracked, and these foam shower pans will not hold up to a forklift driving over them. Luckily, most people are not driving forklifts in their shower. <laughs> At least I hope not. So let's do some more real world situations that might happen that could lead to um, some issues with these foam shower pans. Now, I think the step stool experiment's a good trial because that's very plausible that somebody will have a ladder in a shower. And you can see if we're talking about point load distribution, you have four legs on a ladder and say a 320 pound man gets in there. I know that's a big dude, but that's plausible. Uh, puts a ladder in there. There's going to be about 80 pounds coming down on one small leg of a ladder. So you got 80 pounds per square inch coming down, the compressive strength of the foam itself is 60 pounds per square inch. That would definitely damage the foam. And I'm sure if there was just a small tile that it hit, it would compress. But you can see when I do it, when it's grouted, there's no movement at all. I can bounce up and down. And granted, I'm half that weight. I'm only about 160 pounds, but that's still 40 pounds. And there's if I jump up and down, there's no movement. I'm confident that a ladder on a penny tile grouted will not have issues. Now let's take another situation that might happen. So say you've set your penny tiles, you've grouted them, and now it's time to start working on the walls. 
you're using 12 by 24 tile. So let's see what happens if you accidentally drop a 12 by 24 porcelain tile onto the foam pan. And now it probably depends on how that tile lands. If it landed across its long side and again, distribute that force over 12 or 24 inches, it would probably be different. But if that point load comes down on the corner, it's gonna crush right through the shower pan, destroying the tile, the grout and the membrane underneath. So this is a situation that really could happen. Let's take another situation. A lot of times we have tools when we're working in a shower. The first thing that came to mind was a hammer. So let's see what happens when a hammer drops onto this foam pan. So again, you can see when the hammer drops and it drops down on one point, it's gonna punch right through that tile and grout. So there you have it. You can see that there are situations that would cause issues with these small tiles on a shower pan, but um, you could also probably pull it off if you were careful. I think after the construction is done, you probably wouldn't have any issues. The only issues I foresee happening would be during the actual construction of the shower when there's either tile going in there or tools that could drop and damage it. But after the construction is done, there's not really going to be anything in a shower that could cause it. I've heard one other thing that could happen is high heels. You know, if someone's wearing high heels in the shower, you know, maybe it's a dinner party and somebody just wants to walk in there and see what the shower's like, or if it's maybe they're selling the house as an open house, I could see somebody maybe walking into the shower to check it out. But that's the only other thing that I think that could cause enough point load onto one of those small tiles to actually push it down with grout in it. Uh, I myself think foam shower pans are a really good option for DIYers and beginners. And many times with my coaching clients, if they've never floated before, I do direct them to get a foam pan, either a Schluter Curdy foam pan or a Revolutionary Shower Systems foam pan, or now I can recommend a Rodcat shower pan because I think a foam pan is probably better than a poorly installed mortar bed. So uh, for us, we use mortar beds on all our showers. We don't really use foam pans, but it's more about cost for us. It's more about speed and efficiency. For us, floating is very simple, easy process to do. Most pros, that's the same way. So most pros are gonna be doing a mortar pan. I believe these foam pans work out really well with somebody who doesn't have the experience of floating a pan. So that, anyways, that's my take on it. Uh, before I go, I love you. I love being your tile coach. We'll see y'all in the next video.